Rick Carlisle was salty after that loss. Can the Celtics do this in four, or are we going back to Boston for a game five? We'll talk about it right now on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thanks to Blockbuster Brand, it's holiday season, drop Drew in the mix. And three from KT, no, we not on the next. Flushing competition like Al on Giannis. Juice and Big Zeus still being town's finest. Been a race team going up in the rafters. Watch the scene game in locked on after. Corrales on the breakdown. Clutch like a tip from Dean White on the breakdown. John on the mic, document and domination. Matter pen of back, they it's all seas nation. Rain and Jay's how we started raising business. How we finish locked on. Celtics pod, home of the Peace. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown podcast. Never quits your team every day and I got you covered every single day, Monday through Friday with a free, fresh podcast that drops directly to your device. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcasts. Watch a show on YouTube, get into the comment section. Let me know what you're thinking. I'm John Corrales. If you're new to the show, I am here in Indianapolis, Indiana podcasting from my hotel room that has some level of a background so it doesn't look like i'm being held against my will anywhere so that's nice uh although i am on hotel wi-fi so i hope that this thing holds uh thank you for listening thank you for watching and thank you for welcoming in tom westerholm what's going on tom what is up uh happy birthday to your boy seventh birthday to rafi free thanks man frequent- Frequent interrupter of the lockdown. So yeah, a, po- an, a, a podcast <laughs> guest, I would say. Yeah. 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 No, he's uh, well, thanks, man. He, had a, he, had a, he had a great birthday. He jumped on a jumped on some trampolines, uh, caught some bugs, had a, had a lot of friends around. He had a we had a good day. That's a very seven year old birthday to have. That's awesome. It, to was, hear. it was a real uh, nice seven year old birthday. Yeah. So so people can understand Tom chose to spend time with his son on his birthday instead of coming down to Indiana to hang out with me. So once again, Tom chooses family over friends, and I am salty about that. Just like Rick, Car- Rick Carlisle was salty hey. about this loss uh, to the Celtics. Uh, anyway, uh, so let's let's get you your, Listen, your Rick first. Carlisle is about to have Rick Carlisle is about to have some more time to spend with his family as well. So <laughs> <laughs> boom, bang. <laughs> That's a double bang. That's a bang, bang, bang. bang. <laughs> uh, all right. So, so your thoughts, Tom, after after the game three, uh, thrilling win that throughout the course of the game was drawing all sorts of consternation from people about the quality of the Celtics play. <laughs> See your eyes rolling. I know. And it's like, I, I know how many times we've talked about not wanting to talk about other people's uh, like, you know, kind of take. It's, take it's so here. unavoidable, man. It's so unavoidable. I don't know what to do. There are people I respect and follow. Yeah, and that's like, the weird the thing. Celtics yeah. shouldn't have, the Celtics shouldn't have lost those other those other games. Like you're actually saying that the Celtics should be perfect in the playoffs, and I understand yeah. the quality of competition and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like in, in a in a like vacuum, should they have lost to Miami? Should they have lost to Cleveland? Like they were favored in those games, so technically, no, they shouldn't have. But you you have to allow for the flow of a series team, a team winning a series in five is essentially the same as it winning in four. And I just don't understand how smart basketball people don't get that. You you have to allow for NBA players to be NBA players. Like I understand that the Celtics are the better NBA players, but the other, how many times do we have to talk about this? Like that the other team is also NBA players. Do you know how freaking good these guys are at basketball? Right. It's, it's such a level of disrespect for these other teams that Miami was so bad. Like my Miami shot the freaking lights out. They went ballistic in that, that game to win. And the Celtics like, okay, we took that. And that was still a close one. The Celtics shot horribly in their game two loss right. against Cleveland. And that's, that's a team that still had Donovan Mitchell, right. And yeah. still, and, and played great. Like that's sometimes that is just going to happen. We're watching the Minnesota Timberwolves and Dallas Mavericks, who I incorrectly yesterday stated that the two wins for Dallas were at home. Those were on the road. Now they're at home. Uh, But Anthony uh, Edwards, darling of the playoffs, is having a rough time. And, like, my biggest beef is not with him. uh, I have no problem with Anthony Edwards. mm -mm. I have problems with somebody, like, saying, wow, man, he looks like Michael Jordan's kid out there. Like, okay, and maybe he will in in this game here. But... How about just let these guys be basketball players? And and I don't know this rush to be like, but and before the game is over, 
before the game yeah. is even over, they're like, oh, here go the Celtics again. I like, know. all right, can we see? Can we see what happened? Because you know what happened? They figured it out. And like, I get the, the Celtics have this reputation. But what I saw in this game was, and, and we talked to Joe Mazzulla, uh at the team hotel on, on Sunday here. What is today? Sunday, right? It um, is. They, and, and he was saying, like, this is how it goes sometimes. And, and it, they, they were able to figure it out. And there's, there's like a little bit, not satisfaction, but like, yeah, you know what? This team actually embraced the moment and they got themselves out of that mental funk. Right. Like they actually saw what was happening. And instead of letting an 18 point lead spiral to 28, they said, okay, we're here. What can we do to get out of it? Oh, let's, let's pick up a little higher. Let's, let's, let's do this. Let's do these little things. Let's move the ball a little bit more. Let's get to this matchup and it's growth. And I, I understand the kind of uh, like, oh, here come the, the Celtics again. But how about a like, okay, here they are again. What what, what do they do with it this time? Because yep. it's a different team. It's different players. And that that's, that's the, the thing, thing that always like bugs me. Yep. 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 That No, exactly. That is precisely it. Like it's and like it's a different team. It's a different players. And like even the players who are the same players are different players because they've grown, because they've gone through those experiences. That's right. And, and it's like, that's why you have to wait. I, I honestly, I, I know I'm like the anti-social media guy all the time. And I know I'm annoying about it, but at the same time, it's like, I really do think that this, this, this ability that we now have to broadcast our thoughts in real time makes for worse sports conversations because like what will happen yes. is somebody will say something, then everybody else will hop on and be like, no, you're wrong. And then that person feels like they need to defend their take instead of thinking about it. You know, like it's like you, because you have all these people coming after you. And so you have to like double down and triple down and like convolute it and move the goalposts and whatever else it is. And then like all of a sudden, it's just not that coherent and everybody's mad at everyone. And it's like, I, I, I just, right. I don't, I hate that aspect of the way that we're all talking about hoops on the internet right now. And I, I it gets, again, I, it gets annoying that like we, I'm sure people are annoyed hearing everybody talk about how everybody talks about basketball instead of actually just talking yeah, about, the hoops. That's right. but like, but, but then when you, like, as you were saying, right, then you watch the game and, and, and the end of the game shows all this growth from the Celtics all these moments where they could have just kind of, you know, let the game slip a little bit too far away. And, and like all these moments where the, the Pacers take a three point lead and, and move it back up to seven and the Celtics keep coming and keep doing yeah. the right thing and keep making the right pass and, and, and keep making the right play and end up winning the game. And it shows all this interesting growth. And instead we have to like do this take defending instead of just, I don't know, watching and talking about what happened. Yeah. It's yeah, it's insane. There's two things here. First of all, I think that one element of this is there's a point when you're like sports writers, like and a lot of us are, are, are podcasters and a lot of the, there's a lot of smart people out there and a lot of quick witted people out there. And there's, there's a, a defense mechanism of like, Oh, well I've got, I've got a quick quip for you. And yeah. like, instead, instead of having a conversation, it's like, ah, zing. And it, it it just goes back and forth. It, it, it does devolve. The other thing is, again, credit credit to the other team. Like this is a Pacers team without right. Tyrese Halliburton. Right. But also, this is a Pacers team whose system. And I said this yesterday. I repeat it. I'll repeat it all the time. Halliburton enhances the Pacers system to a point where he's like it make it made it a historically good offense. They spent a lot of time without Halliburton and their offense was still number one because they have a bunch of guys who can really play offense. Their problem is they're not great defenders and they're not great closers. And they, they, they have games like they had last night, but they, they were trying to close the door on the Celtics. They generated two great corner three point looks down the stretch that <laughs> would last. have been demoralizing. Right. Yeah. Like, and, and not, and I'm not even counting the, the Neesmith one mm. at the buzzer. I'm, I'm just like, like McC it was a McConnell, I think that hit the one with three minutes to go and made it like seven again. Yep. And I was like, 
And and, and that, I believe that one was after the Hauser miss that could have tied the game. That's and right. that was like a wow, that was a flip. Yeah. Yeah. So so like give the Pacers credit for going out and playing their butts off, going out there and playing and scoring and running that offense and just not uh not not giving into the narrative. Siakam going down there like People forget that Pascal Siakam exists or something because he's really damn good, he's and he so killed good. the Celtics on post-ups. Miles Turner, really good. He's a really good basketball really good. player. He he can do – like so it's like, oh, well, they're missing Halliburton. Yeah, obviously, all-NBA player. That's fine. But also, they have good players. They have good guy. And if you just – Sit back and say, hey, wow, Pacers are playing great. Celtics not really matching it right now. Let's see if they can do it. And then at the end, you you look at the whole picture and go, all right, I this is this is my this is my oh, I got my analysis now. You can like give your thoughts on all that stuff, but yeah. like the oh the Celtics are blowing it again, and here they go again. Like yeah, I don't know. And here we are spending another 12 minutes talking about like the other people talking about the Celtics, but I really do think Celtics fans. Are, are kind of sick. The ones who, the ones who listen to podcasts are definitely are people who are, are somewhat online as well. I think, yeah, yeah, and yeah. and they see and they hear it, and it it gets it gets old. It gets old because I saw real, real meaningful growth in the execution for the Celtics. It looked different. With it just objectively looked a lot different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me let me get to. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll continue this. We'll get to Rick Carlisle. Uh, in just a second. So much more. So much more to talk about. Today's show is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Thank you for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Locked On Sports Today, streaming 24-7 on YouTube and on the Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's all the great sports talk that you want, not the fake fighting, not the, you know, contrived topics. It's real sports talk from real experts on the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day, and we got your team covered and all teams covered on Locked On Sports Today. All right, let's get back to the conversation here. With Tom Westerholm, and uh, I guess the the my my final word on on all of that is just it's it's hard it's hard to block out the noise, and I think it's easy to lean on what the Celtics used to be. I don't think people are really understanding where the Celtics are uh, in their development in 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 the whole process. Joe Mazzulla has has grown as a head coach the the fact that they come out and talk about uh Missoula in a timeout at the end of the third quarter telling everybody hey stop feeling sorry for yourselves come out there let's let's th- what did you think was going to happen you're on the road in a hostile environment the other team is jacked up of course you're going to be down double digits like of course you're going to that's going to happen so and it's almost like the Celtics hear the stuff that's being said about them instead of just focusing. And so when, when everybody's talking about that moment, it just makes you like really fully appreciate how much they're buying into what Missoula is selling. Like we're, like you said, we're Missoula pilled here, but they are too. They are too. They, yeah. they, he, he said, get over yourselves. And they're like, Oh yeah, we just let's, all right, let's figure it out. Like, you're 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 sinking. Your boat is sinking, and you're crying about the boat sinking. But the, you can see the shore. Just figure out a way to get the boat to shore. 
and you'll be okay. Just it's, it's figure it out. And that, that level of poise, removing that panicky play that the Celtics have played with in the past. That's how you get a 13 2 run to close. Yeah. Even when you're missing, like Derek White was missing and he hits that shot. Holiday, you know, hits, you know, feeling sick, you know, the, the, the Drew flu game, like all of that stuff, it, it, it all culminates from them buying into the Missoula that I know, I'm flipping my, my bullet points here, but <laughs> yeah, the, the Missoula, Missoula has like, it's, it's a full team thing now. Like we can just say Missoula has them. They're buying in. This is, you know, it's the talent, it's the coaching, it's all of it. Yeah, I, I think there's this, Missoula does this really refreshing thing, I think, where he doesn't, he he, he kind of gives you, if, if you're one of his players, he kind of gives you the space, I think, f- from what it seems, to acknowledge, like, the thing that is happening, acknowledge it, examine it, analyze it, and then address it you know it's it's one of those situations where it's like it, it, it's like you know maybe a team went on a big run and they were shooting you know unsustainably and like you know you, you can kind of like be like yeah okay so that so that's that's what has happened and this is the stage that we find ourselves in now it's not like yelling at yourself for past mistakes it's hey okay so what are we going to do now about those mistakes how are we going yeah. to now take what has happened and turn it the way that we want it to go you know like it, it, I, again, I, I don't know how many times I can say that this is very therapy. You know, like everything he does is very like um, this man's been to therapy. But it's like it is, it is truly <laughs> just like take a you know take a situation and 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 just and feel it. You know, do what you need to do with it, and then. But like now, it's time to move on, and now it's like everything that has happened, even if it's not your fault, is now your responsibility, and that's how he like coaches a basketball game. You know, it's like yeah. 11 point, 12 point deficit. Maybe it's not your fault. Maybe the Pacers came out and shot 80% from, you know, oh my God. inside the arc. Maybe, you know, maybe the Heat came out in game two and, and completely shot you out of the building and, and, you know, whatever it is. You take that and then you say, okay, so then what's the next right thing to do after that has happened? And that has really worked for a team that has more talent than pretty much any other team they face. It turns out that just kind of, making the re- next right play when you have as much talent as the Celtics have is a really good strategy. So I, I think that's, I think that's a lot of it, right? Is that it's just like Joe Missoula kind of has this, um, th- this way of kind of, uh, of kind of, yeah, taking the present moment and, and figuring out what the next right thing is. And then yeah, stop feeling sorry for yourselves. Totally. This is a tough situation to be in. What did you expect was going to happen now? Move on. Stop feeling sorry. Go just do the next right thing. And then that will be, get you in the best position that you can be in today. And it's the, the key to the, all of that is understanding that there's so much time in a basketball game. There's so yeah. much time in an NBA yeah. game like that. That 18 point lead came with six and change to go in the third quarter. And you'd think like, wow, two, like two and a half quarters have passed already. And like, it's getting worse. We're at our worst point. Two and a half quarters later, and this just this notion of okay, yeah, but it's okay. You're the Celtics. Mm-hmm. You, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and Derek White and Drew Holiday and Al Horford. You're, you're all capable of putting up a lot of points. Do, do you need more than 18 minutes to right. outscore a team by 18? You, you, they could have done it in the, in those six minutes, and they almost did. Yeah. They got halfway there. Yeah. So if 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 they can just like focus they they can get to where they need to go um and real quick on that the other thing about that with the pacers is that just don't give up against the pacers because as as good as they are and as as big a streak as they can go on they are incredibly streaky so if if they're rolling there's good chance that there's going to be a stretch where you are then rolling and if you can if you can make that roll last longer than their roll that you might Especially yeah. if you're the Celtics and you're better, and they don't have Tyrese Halliburton, there's a good chance you're going to win that game. They were down 18 at that point, and they outscored them by 21 the rest of the way. That's you know that yeah. that's exactly to your point. That you're both NBA teams, you're both super talented. The Celtics are more talented, so just 
if you can just get those few stops that you need. And honestly, the way they were shooting, the Celtics defense was not great, but it was not so horrible that right. it was it was like worthy of 70% shooting. Like right. They they were we, they were hitting we, we some tend, shots. We, in those in those scenarios, we're we, in those scenarios, we tend to like blame the Celtics and be like, "Wow, this team stinks." That wow, this team is playing terrible defense right now. And it's like, like not they, they were playing like mediocre defense, and the other team was hooping. It's a big difference yeah. between those two things. That's right, mediocre defense and like super super hot shooting, like because they were they were taking advantage of every opening. Um, so hey, like credit to the Pacers again. Um, but it took a quarter and a quarter and a half for the Celtics to outscore the Pacers by 21. And it took, you know, like, like the Celtics are capable of doing that. They're capable of doing it in game four. Can they do it in game four? And we'll talk about salty Rick Carlisle because he he is angry and he's trying every trick. He's trying every trick in the book. We'll talk about that in just a second. Tom. NBA coaches, they hear things. Mm. They hear they hear horrible things, the most ungodly things, NBA conspiracy things, like when the team is on the verge of winning something that earns them a trophy, they're preparing to bring that trophy in case of the win. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Clutch your pearls. Clutch them. Uh, Hold them tight to your chest. <laughs> Rick Carlisle was talking about if you haven't heard the clip can't play it but uh, he, he said NBA coaches hear things and I've, I've heard that the NBA is making contingency plans to hold a trophy presentation uh, here on our home floor and you're like yeah Rick that's what happens when a team is up 3-0 in yeah. the conference finals they hand out a trophy if you were up 3-0, they'd be making the same plans to hand out the trophy just in case you want it. So he's like, Yeah, we've got to, we gotta, I can't believe. <laughs> like, what are you, what are you doing? Like he was angry. I understand, like, his team had just blown a golden opportunity, and they legitimately could have been up 2-0 in the 2-1 in this series. Like it's Celtics 3-0, and it's you know, game one. Pacers punted that sucker and game three, the Celtics took that sucker. Yeah. Um, so, but it's still, it is what it is. And for what it's worth, the last two minute report says all, all the calls were correct. No, no mistakes by the rest. Absolutely. Perfect. Felt final two minutes by the rest. So, um, but he's, he's out there pulling every, every tr trick he can like, the disrespect, the NBA, I can't believe they're going to do this on our home court. Like, what, like, what, what are you going to do? But, um, it's funny. It's just funny to see Rick Carlisle, like reaching into his bag to try and like, will this team to, if they win, if they win this game and send it back to Boston, it's just like the, it's not exactly David and Goliath. It's if David hit Goliath with the rock, but Goliath was like, Ooh, ouch. Instead of falling and dying, it was like, ooh, ouch. Oh, I think you might have drawn some blood. And then slot, you know. But, um, yeah, it's just funny to see Rick doing that. I mean, it is. I, I think if you're the if you're the Celtics, like, um, I, 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 I've been, I'm kind of on record as, as really liking and respecting the Pacers, right? Like, I think, like, I think oh, yeah. we, we've, made, we've made that pretty clear here. To the, to the point where Pacers fans have come into our mentions and, and mentioned me on Twitter and said, you guys are, have done a great job showing respect to your opponent. So thank you to the oh, Pacers fans. Well, that's nice. I you wasn't know, even... That's really nice. It's fishing. really nice. I wasn't it's, fishing, yeah, but that's, that's refreshing. Nice that yeah, was that nice. Is. It was nice. I was very happy to hear that from Pacers fans. They're, they're Midwest, man. They're very polite here. It's very Don't nice. Don't you love Midwesterners? God, we're the best. I um, mean, <laughs> I tolerate them. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, the thing, the one thing I will say is like, if you're the Celtics and you hear Rick Carlisle saying, we are coming for everything. We're coming for everything. We're going to come after these guys. <laughs> and you know that that team has Aaron Neesmith on it. Do you want to <laughs> rest your guys? <laughs> like, yeah. like, maybe well, give like, a couple like, of guys a night off and just like, see if you can win game four with like, you know, like a mostly start Zima Kyluk. 
Yeah. But all of a sudden, like it's it's Mikhailuk, it's you know Brissett, Tillman. Yeah. Like, yeah. look, no disrespect, guys. We got to we got to play five guys, but Aaron Neesmith yeah. is out there with like you know uh, Dune level machinery or whatever. Like, right. just trying to like, right, right, right. Like, yeah, like Mad Max Neesmith edition. Mad he's Max, like, just like yeah, yeah. Some post apocalyptic thing where he's wearing a bucket on his head and he's just like macheting yeah. people. He's, he's got like the the silver stuff all over his mouth. <laughs> he's like, really like yeah, yeah. Um, I love Aaron Neesmith, man. That dude is crazy. This is how he's built is- his career. Yeah. He's a playoff starter, you know? He's yeah. gone from where he was in Boston to a playoff starter. Right. Total respect for him, but like Dude, okay. he came, I mean, he came just, into the NBA as like a shooter. Like he was just like, oh yeah, this yeah. guy can like shoot shots. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, this guy, this guy's insane. This guy is like throwing yeah. himself everywhere. Like, yeah, I, I have a lot of respect for him, but just like when you put when you put one plus one of Neesmith plus those comments by Carlisle, it's like uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Everybody just. Yeah. Everybody, you know. Uh, head watch on your a knees. Watch your ankles. Head on a yeah, yeah. 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 A lot uh, of threes. No, I mean, look, maybe not driving as much as you should. Just, just shoot your threes, and, and yeah, hopefully you make threes up tomorrow. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, no, and look, I, I think, the, of course, the Pacers are going to play really hard. They're a really good team, and they have like, and I think too, like, look, the, the East. The whole NBA, right? Like, there's all these young guys coming up who are really good. There's no guarantee yeah. that you're going to get to anywhere any season th- these days, right? Like, they're, like good players move around. Good, play- like you know, maybe yeah. Donovan Mitchell moves on, and, and like you know, there's another team in the in the East that's like really really tough. All of a sudden, you know, maybe the Knicks, you know, get a little healthier, get a little hey. better next year. Orlando, of, like those, t- yeah. There's a lot of good yeah, young tough teams. Team. You're in the Eastern Conference Finals, like yeah, go as hard as you can because. Tomorrow is not promised for anybody. It like it, it like right. with the amount of young talent that's out right now. So like, yeah, you gotta you gotta go as hard as you can. And like the Pacers, like I I, I mean, yeah, I know we're, we're gonna Celtics in four. Like I, I I said the other day, right? I was like, I could see the Celtics sweeping if this, you know, if they don't shoot themselves in the foot. But it's like, but but again, that's that's no disrespect to the Pacers because I think they're gonna play incredibly hard, and I think they understand kind of the. The situation that they're in and the opportunity that's that's still here that's still kind of in front of them there's there's a you know i'm gonna borrow joe mazula i'm gonna step into joe mazula's lane talking about martial arts um but there's just a, a fighting a fighting concept of using your opponent's momentum against them so um this this could very well be a situation where the pacers are going to come out and be like super super aggressive and it's like you kind of just say yeah, you know what? We'll be as aggressive as you want, and you use that momentum of like, su- like the attacking. Just don't even worry about their three pointers. Don't even worry about it because they are not going to be shooting from three. This is a team that's going to attack, 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 attack. So just oh yeah, you- really quick on that to your to your Missoula point. How interesting was his comment yesterday? Like the way that he described like so they attack. And then they attack again a little bit lower, and then they attack again a little yeah. bit lower. You know, like yeah, that was so so insightful by him. I appreciated that answer. Yeah, yeah. He's a, he's a very smart guy. He's a very it, smart guy. Like no I've been question. trying to tell people for a long time. Like last year, he struggled from a coaching perspective. He was new. He was his first year, and he's thrown into the mix. Like, and I, I I I'm not trying to be like, well, I saw this coming, but like I I did see. The insightful nature. I saw how his brain worked. Yeah, I, yeah. I keep yeah. saying I like how his brain works because I feel like my brain works in a similar fashion. Like I, I, what he says resonates with me. Right. And so I, I, I get the this this process stuff. I really do get it. Um, and and yeah, that that is that was insightful. It's just like when you pick them up higher, it just keeps them from getting like their first second third hits don't get them as low as as when you pick them up lower and it's kind of hard to defend when you are kind of under the basket and like yep. it's just you, you give them too much space yep. and but i i think the celtics should just like draw them in just like you you want to drive you want to get into the paint yeah draw them in and then then you hit them like we haven't seen Siakam double teams. We haven't seen like any of those kind of like late doubles, the traps down low, and then jumping passing lanes when they try to pass out of it. I think there's a real chance 
in the first quarter that maybe maybe the Pacers come out like super aggressive and they get a couple of quick ones, but I can see the Celtics drawing them in, doubling, forcing like uh th- they're gonna move they're gonna move a tick too fast. I feel like the Pacers are gonna move like that tick too fast, and when you move that tick too fast, your timing's a little bit off, and yeah. I feel like there's gonna be a lot of passes into Boston hands. I can see the Celtics getting a bunch of transition points early and like I can see offensive fouls from the Pacers. I can see um I can see the 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 turnovers and and it could it could be over quickly because the Pacers are going to be too amped up. Fouls, you know, a lot of uh, Celtics in the bonus with like 7 minutes to go in the first quarter. All of those yeah. things are possible against a super super hyped up Pacers team. But the Celtics have to be on their game because you have to be when you're drawing somebody in, you're you're letting them into a comfort zone and you're just trying to nudge them instead of keeping them out of their comfort zone ahead of time. You're trying to draw them in and then nudge them past it, if yeah, that makes yeah. sense. And you gotta be careful chair, because of. so what's that? Pulling the chair, kind of like like that kind the of kind concept. of yeah, kind of kind yeah. of that concept, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you got to be careful because if you're not if you're not focused and cap- you know able to kind of be in that moment of like okay now you you're right. just letting them be in their comfort zone, right, right? And so instead of letting them sail past it, they're just in it, and that's that's where it's going to take like focus and commu- communication and teamwork and all that stuff. Yeah, for sure. I mean, and like who who's better at, you know, putting together like wh- like who who would you who else would you want besides the team with like Derek White, Drew Holiday, you know, yeah. like I guess it's like the Celtics have the personnel for this. They're built for this. Um yeah. You know, I I think yeah, I I think there's there's like a there you know that that initial punch by the Pacers where, where they're, you know, everything's all out. Everything's like, you know, go for it. Try to, try to, try to win it. Now it's like you weather a couple of those in this, in this, and it's like, cause nobody who's down three Oh kind of thinks they're going to win. It's like, if you win that first game, then maybe you think you can win a few more, but in that yeah. moment at three Oh, I just don't think anybody actually thinks like, Oh, we can do this. You know, I think, and that's why you hear yeah. people talking all the time about like one game at a time. So if you, if you weather a few of those storms, and the, you know the team starts to feel like, yeah, we just cannot keep, we just can't like keep these guys down. Like we, and then you know, and we're down three zero. I think I think you could put some distance at some point in there. Yeah, I, I think I think the difference between the Celtics and the Pacers in this series, aside from like, oh, the Celtics are a better defensive team, and the the Pacers yeah, yeah. don't have that. You know, blah blah blah. It's that. The Celtics have been able to keep their wits about them down the stretch. For all of the talk about their their clutch performance, at the, in the Pacers, like each side has to be complicit in the other's success. The Pacers haven't been there at the end of games. They haven't been able to close these out, and the Celtics have been able to get to a place where they are making those plays down the stretch. I think the cumulative effect of all of that is going to be they, um, the Celtics are able to kind of put, put that pressure. If if the Celtics are up after one, there's going to be like, uh, like if if the Pacers can't make a last push to start the the, the second quarter, I don't know how much they're going to be able to muster down the street. When when you're when you're if the Celtics are up at halftime, especially if they're up double digits, and the Celtics shouldn't think like this, but I can mm-hmm. think like this. I feel like. The the Pacers just might be like that's where the frustration is going to set in, and the oh, man, well, it's been a good season. Like all you need is a couple of guys. You don't even even need the whole team. You just need a couple of guys to be like, oh, well, all right, well, I guess I can make my vacation plans. Oh, I'm going to send my my wife in the stands a a little hand signal like, okay, book book, book the hotel. <laughs> you know who I don't think is so. going to be making any hand signals about booking hotels until the final buzzer is uh, Aaron Neesmith or TJ McConnell or <laughs> some of these guys yeah. go crazy, crazy hard. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to them. Shout out to the Pacers, man. This is I, I will say, even if the okay. Celtics win this in four, 
Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, uh, no, I, I, I was gonna I, say I, I was gonna say that this is a tougher series than the other two. I agree. Also, I well, okay. What one hot take about Andrew Nemhard is that I I think he's got a little bit of like that Derek like not not similar players, but that Derek White of like. I think down the line, he could be one of those guys where it's like, I don't know if this guy's a role player. I don't know if this guy's a star. Yeah. He's somewhere in this mid tier where it's like a big time yeah. ceiling raiser. And I really like him. Like, I think that he yeah. has got a little bit of that potential in him, which is, which makes him hey. a really fun basketball player. And like, I'm not doing lockdown Pacers here, but you know, shout out to Tony East and lockdown Pacers. But like the, the, when you're looking at the positives out of the season, Obviously, Tyrese Halliburton has an all NBA level season. Okay, that's great. Uh, Miles Turner has a great season. You know that you, you got Pascal Siakam. That's great. And it looks like he's going to stick around. And now Nembhard is like, oh, damn, this, this guy, you got a player. You got a baller yeah, in him. Like, yep. there's, there's something to build on with this team. They need to get some focus and some better, you know, defensive players and, and figure that stuff out. But there's there's something to build on in Indiana, and that's that's nice for them. Uh, the Celtics are building on uh, a 3-0 lead and hopefully a series win and a trip to the NBA Finals. I already booked my hotels in Dallas, so we'll, well see how that thing. goes. That's here. the next thing Rick Carlisle is going to be complaining about post uh, pre games. Like, I heard some Celtics beat writers already yeah. booked their hotels. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> guys. I know there's a lot of motivation, but this beat writer that you've never heard of booked a hotel in Dallas already. If that doesn't get you going, I don't know what will. Uh, all right, Tom. Always appreciate you hopping on, my man. All right, man. And I, whoop, and I always appreciate... I cut time off, sorry. And I always appreciate you, the listener, the watcher here on the Locked On Celtics podcast. If you're new to the show, if you just, you just picked it up this season or just picked it up this playoff run, thank you so much. I, I really am happy to have you on board. This is a, a great team, a special team. I've been saying since the preseason, this is the year. And so far, so good. So hang with me for the whole ride. I will obviously I will be in Dallas. If it's Dallas, uh, it's looking like it's Dallas. If Minnesota you know, can come back, I'll book my hotels in Minnesota. I have no preference. So make sure you're subscribed wherever you get your podcast. Watch the show on YouTube. Get into the comment section and share the podcast. Spread the word. Tell everybody they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.